Hello everyone, I am Sneha Kushwaha, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Rama University, Kanpur. Uh, today our topic is SAR, that is Structural Activity Relationship. In medicinal chemistry, it is a very important topic. Uh, as it uh, sets up relationship or it uh, connects uh, the structure of the chemical compound with its uh, biological activity. Now what is SAR? SAR means structure activity relationship and it states the dependence of the biological activity of a chemical upon its molecular structure. In chemistry we come across certain chemical structures and uh, they have certain uh, different constituents attached to the basic nucleus and the structure imparts various properties and it has uh, certain biological effects. Now, when we make uh, certain changes to a lead molecule, it uh, uh, causes the change in activity. So, whenever such changes are made to a lead molecule or a parent molecule, uh, there are five possibilities in which the activity can change. So, after making the changes, the analog produced has uh, these five possibilities. There may be a uh, improvement in its activity or there may be a decrease in the activity or there may be no effect. Or uh, there may be some adverse or side effects or there may be complete change in the activity. Now here uh, uh, there are shown two animals, elephant uh, which is a heavy weighted animal and uh, has less efficiency to run while the second animal is a deer which is a light weighted animal and runs faster for the wrong motivation. My aim to show these uh, pictures uh, is to connect uh, or make you understand the relationship between the structure and the activity. So due to the heavy weight uh, this uh, elephant uh, can't run uh, uh, fast. Uh, on the other hand, deer, which is light weighted, can run faster. So we can say that the weight of the animals is a factor which affects the activity, that is the running activity. Similarly, if we consider the chemical structures, the structures poses a certain biological activity. Whenever the structure is changed, there is a change in the biological activity. We can see in the figure, this is a parent molecule. So yeah, in the center, this is the basic nucleus and the three groups are attached. Now, if we make certain changes and produce uh, various analogs, if we uh, make certain changes in the parent molecule, the uh, resultant structures are known as analogs. And uh, this is known as a parent molecule. Now, these analogs, by making certain changes, have uh, different uh, biological activities than the lead compound. So, we can say that uh, uh, whenever uh, there is a change in the structure of a chemical compound, there is always a change in the biological activity. Now, structural activity relationship studies are usually carried out by making minor changes to the structure of a lead to produce analogs and then assessing the effect that these structural changes have on the biological activity. And so, we are discussing about uh, how the uh, analogs are produced by making certain uh, minor changes in the structure of a leaf and then analyzing the changes in the biological activity. Now, how can these changes be made in the leader structure to produce a certain analogs? So, we can uh, uh, do, do this uh, by three ways. Firstly, by changing the size and shape of the carbon skeleton. Next is the nature and degree of substitution and uh, the third one is the stereochemistry of the leaf. So in today's session, we are going to discuss in detail about the changes that we can make in the size and the shape of the carbon skeleton and its effect on the biological activity of the produced analogs. So if we change the size and the shape of the carbon skeleton, we can do this in three ways again. First one is changing the number of methylene groups in the chain and rings. Second one is increasing or decreasing the degree of unsaturation and the third one is introducing or removing a ring system. So we will discuss all these three points in detail. So let's come to the first one. Changing the number of methylene groups in chain and rings. So methylene group is CH2. Now 
uh, if we increase the number of methylene groups in a chain, uh, the size of the ring increases and also the lipophilicity of the compound also get enhanced. So an increase in the activity with the increase in the number of methylene groups is due to the increase in the lipid solubility of the analog. And uh, due to the increase in the lipid solubility, there is a, a better membrane permeability. So we can say that uh, methylene groups, uh, uh, if we enhance uh, or we increase the number of methylene groups uh, in a ring or a chain, we can increase the uh, uh, lipophilicity of the compound. Now, a decrease in activity with the increase in the number of methylene group is uh, due to the reduction of water solubility of the analogs. Now, this water, uh, now this reduction in the water solubility can result in the poor distribution of the analogs in the aqueous media, and this will result in the trapping of the analogs in the biological membranes. Now, if we introduce uh, uh, chain branching or uh, different sized rings uh, and uh, substitution of chain for rings or vice versa, there may be certain effects on the potency and activity of the analogs as discussed earlier. Now here says an example of uh, chlorpromazine which is antipsychotic in nature. Now this is the structure of chlorpromazine. Uh, here a chlorine atom is being attached, here is sulfur, nitrogen atom is being attached here. So when this sulfur atom is uh, replaced by a C single bond C, we can say CH2 single bond CH2, this chlorpromazine gets converted to clomipramine. Now the thing is, the, the thing is that the antipsychotic nature of chlorpromazine is converted to antidepressant uh, activity. So we can say that a slight change in the structure causes the complete change in the activity of the molecule. Now, second one is changing the degree of unsaturation. In uh, chemistry, we often uh, come across uh, saturation and unsaturation terms. So, uh, if there is a single bond in a chemical structure, there is a flexibility in the structure and the compound is not rigid. As we increase the unsaturation, that is when we incorporate the uh, double bond or triple bond, the flexibility of the compound decreases and the rigidity of the compound gets enhanced. So, uh, when this is uh, done, it means if we are increasing the unsaturation, then the flexibility is getting decreased and the flexibility is getting decreased. So, the removal of double bonds can uh, produce analogs that can fit in the receptor sites by taking up more suitable conformation. Now, the introduction of a double bond increases the rigidity as I have told earlier and it also introduces the E and Z isomers which can also have certain effects on the biological activity of the compounds. Now, here are uh, example of uh, cortisol and prednisolone. So, cortisol is a parent compound and prednisolone is its analog. The entire molecule is uh, are same in structure. There is a slight difference. Here, a uh, second double bond is being introduced. Now, with the incorporation of this double bond, uh, there uh, the prednisolone, uh, which is the analog of cortisol, uh, is 30 times more potent than cortisol. Both are anti-inflammatory, but still, the prednisolone is 30 times more potent. Now, the second example is of phenothiazine and protopyrrolene. So again, when we are making certain changes in phenothiazine, that is this S atom is uh, replaced by C double bond C. And this uh, nitrogen atom is distended from this uh, ring system with a propyl chain. The phenothiazine is converted to protoptyrin and also the antipsychotic uh, property is changed to antidepressant. So we can say the uh, change in structure causes the changes in activity. Now the double bond, uh, uh, inter, uh, when we introduce a double bond in uh, a lead compound, the analogs produced are sometimes sensitive to metabolic oxidation. So it is not always uh, beneficial to introduce the double bond. Now the reactivity of the double bonds causes the analog to be more toxic than the lead. This is also a drawback of introducing the double bond. Third one is the introduction or removal of a ring system. So 
introduction of a ring system uh, changes the shape and increases the overall size of the analog. The effect of these changes on the potency and the activity of the analog is uh, generally not predictable. The increase in size can be useful in filling a hydrophobic pocket in a target site. This is a very important point. If we introduce a ring system, it, can, it, will, increase the, it will increase the size of the molecule and it will also help the uh, filling of a hydrophobic pocket and which will in turn help in uh, strengthening the binding of the drug to the target. So this uh, property we can understand with this uh, example of beta-rolactam and prolipram. Both the uh, compounds are antidepressants in nature, but still this roliprem is 10 times more potent than this parent compound that is dimethoxyphenyl metarolactam. So why it is so? Uh, uh, there is a slight difference in the structures of uh, both the compounds. Here the methyl group, uh, methyl group in this methoxy is replaced by cyclopentyl group. So this introduction of the cyclopentyl group uh, it causes the increased inhibitory activity of this uh, roliprem uh, towards the cyclic AMP phosphodiesterase enzyme and causes the filling of the hydrophobic pockets in the active site of the enzyme. And this property or this presence of this cyclopentyl group causes the uh, enhancement of its property up to 10 times. So roliprem is more active than the parent compound. Now, if we incorporate a smaller alicyclic ring systems into a lead structure, it reduces the possibility of producing an analog that is too big for its target site. Then uh, it also reduces the possibility of complications caused by the existence of the conformers. Now, this we can understand with this example. This is trenylcytromine, which is an antidepressant, and uh, this is 1 amino 2 phenyl ethene. Now, there is a slight difference in the structure. Here, a double bond is present with the amino group and the benzyl ring. And here, instead of a double bond, a cyclic structure is being replaced. Now, this trenyl cyclamine is more stable and possesses antidepressant property. In turn, this one amino 2 phenylethene is uh, more prone uh, to the metabolic oxidations due to the presence of this double bond. So, it is uh, quite unstable as compared to trenyl cyclamine. Now, the insertion of aromatic systems into the structure of the lead will introduce uh, rigidity into the structure as well as increases the size of the analog as we have discussed this earlier. So, larger systems, uh, uh, larger systems, uh, uh, we can give example like uh, benzene and 5 membered heterocyclic systems. Now, the P electrons of aromatic system may or may not improve the binding of the analog to its target site. Now, heterocyclic aromatic systems will also introduce extra functional groups into the structure, which could also affect the potency and activity of the analog. So, we can understand this with the example of uh, chlorpromazine with uh, chlorpyrazine. In chlorpromazine and pro, uh, pro uh, there is a slight difference in the structure here the two methyl groups attached to this uh, nitrogen atom is being replaced by n methyl piperazine group so due to the introduction of this n methyl piperazine group there is an increased antimatic anti uh, property and a reduced and uh, neuroleptic property and this uh, uh, changes in the property uh, is uh, entirely due to the uh, insertion of the tertiary amino group now, the incorporation of ring system, especially the larger systems into the structure of a lead, can be used to produce the analogs that are resistant to enzymatic attack by sterically hindering the access of the enzyme to the relevant functional group. So, here comes, comes the concept of sterical hindrance. So, there are certain um, compounds in which uh, certain functional groups uh, pose sterical hindrance. So, we can understand this uh, with the example of diphenicillin, which is uh, resistant to beta lactams. So, this is the structure of diphenicillin. So, here in this st uh, structure, we can see there is a presence of diphenyl group. This diphenyl group uh, poses a uh, confers uh, the steric hindrance for the enzyme beta lactamase, uh, due to which uh, the enzyme cannot approach this beta lactam ring, and hence it is uh, resistant towards the enzyme. So, this diphenyl ring is very, very important for the resistance of the diphenyl 
compound. Next example is of a 2-phenyl benzyl penicillin. It is not resistant for beta lactamase. Though the diphenyl uh, ring is present here, then also it is uh, not resistant. Why? The reason is that here is uh, extra carbon is being incorporated, and due to which uh, the distance between this uh, beta lactam ring and this uh, diphenyl ring gets increased, due to which uh, the statical hindrance is not there. And therefore, the enzyme can easily attack this beta lactam ring. So, there is a certain change in the property. Now, the third example is of benzyl penicillin, which is also not resistant for beta lactamase. And again, the reason is the absence of the phenyl group or any other substituent of this phenyl ring. So, this was all for now. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.